All right, so for this problem, we have the sum from n equals It did zoom, it just took a second. That's very zoomed. Uh, N equals, look how large my hand is! <laughs> Holy smokes! That was terrifying. Okay, N equals 1 to infinity of 3 over 2 to the N. Still have, um, we're keeping in mind the stuff that was in the video last night. So the video last night was talking about geometric series and telescoping series. Um, as a reminder, your telescoping series um, were series where if you wrote out the first couple terms, um, you'd be able to write out the terms and then the terms would start to cancel each other out. Okay. And then geometric series were series where um, the terms you as you wrote them, it kept multiplying by the same number over and over and over again to write the next couple terms. Okay, so as you look at this problem, another way to rewrite something like this, there's a couple different ways that a problem like this could be written. Um, and so I want you guys to be able to recognize that when you see one like this. So a problem could be written like this, or they could rewrite it. And they could take this and pull out the th and write um, 1 over 2 and put the n on the outside. They could do that. And the reason they could do that is because, um, like, when you pull out a fraction like that, the number, the numerator of the fraction gets the exponent and the denominator gets the exponent as well. But 1 to an exponent is always going to be 1. So that's why it's okay for you to do that. So here, the 2 is getting the exponent, but 1 to the exponent is not going to change the number at all. So you could do that, or you could also take it and you could write this as n equals 1 to infinity. You could write this as 3 times 1 over 2 to the n. You could do something like that as well. So all different ways of writing it, but they mean the same thing. Okay, just different ways of thinking about it. So, what type of pattern do we have going on here once we rewrote it and can see what's going on? It's geometric, okay? So, we're say this is a geometric pattern. Okay, if it's geometric, we want to know what the R value is. What does it multiply by repeatedly? It's going to multiply one and a half repeatedly. That's the number that gets the exponent. So you can recognize that probably most easily in this form. Or you can see that because um, it's dividing by two repeatedly. And dividing by two repeatedly is the same as multiplying by one half repeatedly. Okay, so the R value is one half. And so if that is the case, if the R value is one half, what do we know about the convergence? Does it converge or diverge? It's going to converge. So we're going to say it converges. And then we are going to be able to find the number that it converges to. And how do we do that? That's the formula. So we're going to say the sum equals. And what's the formula? So it's on, at the very beginning of your notes. Mm -hmm. So it's the first term, and we get the first term by plugging 1 in. So if you plug 1 in, what do you get? 3 halves over 1 minus r. Okay, so the sum is 3 halves divided by 1 half. 
So that's three halves times two over one. The twos cancel, you just get three. So if you were to write out the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and add them all up, as you did this to infinity, those terms added up would get closer and closer and closer and closer to three. That's how it works. That's what that means. So if we were to write out the terms, the first term is three halves, the second term is three fourths, the third term is three eighths, then three sixteenths, then three thirty seconds, then three sixty fourths, then three one twenty eighths. If we were to write all those terms out and add them up and go forever, we were to stick some little person in the corner or big person. Whew, that was a close call. Stick some big person or a little person or medium sized person in the corner. There's no prejudice here against the size of people. Um, and make them add up those numbers forever. Those numbers that would get closer and closer and closer to three. That's what this means. So the sum of the series, the pattern of numbers, the pattern of numbers has the pattern that each of the numbers are being divided by two or multiplying by one half. The pattern of numbers, as you add them over time, is going to get closer to three. It's not the same as what? That that is what a limit means. A limit, yeah, a limit means that it's going to approach something, but never necessarily get there because it's infinity. So we can't actually do infinity. The limit is three. As n goes to infinity. Yeah. It's kind of what? Yeah, yeah, summation. Uh huh. Because remember, limit means that you're like thinking of things as something goes to infinity, and this is saying from the first term to the infinite term, but we're adding things up. So this is like um, another way of thinking of a limit. It's just we had to, we couldn't use the limit notation because limit notation would say you're thinking of plugging infinity into a function, and we're not just plugging infinity in, we're talking about adding stuff so this almost is the same idea of an as an integral because remember integral is talking about like adding things infinitely many times yeah all right example five okay are our brains feeling a little bit better about what things mean maybe yeah okay so here's the next one very similar but a subtle difference we'll see if we can catch it n equals 1 to infinity of 3 over 2 to the n. So very similar numbers. What does this problem mean? Yeah, the 3 is also being multiplied every time. So is this telescoping? Is it geometric? It is geometric, but it diverges because the R value is three greater than, um, yeah, I think it's equal to, no, I'm brain farting. My brain has tooted. Greater than or equal to one. Yeah, so if it's equal to one, it also diverges. So what it means when it diverges is if you were to take all the terms and add them up, they're not going to a specific number. They're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can keep adding your numbers, but they're not going to go to three. They're not going to go to five. They're going to go to infinity. So your sum is just bigger and bigger and bigger because your numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So like, yeah, we know the sum, it's big. Some big number. That's not prejudice, that's true. All right, example six. We, with that one, we would say like, yeah, we know the sum, it's infinity, but infinity is not a number, so we can't conclusively say what it is. Does that make sense? So we say it converges if we can um, say that, yeah, the, the sum is approaching a specific number. And it diverges if it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the positive direction or bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. Like a really big negative number or a really big positive number, but you wouldn't be able to get to a specific number. Converges means 
the pattern is going to a specific number. Does that make sense? Okay. And the unique thing about geometric and telescoping series is that you can say what that specific number is. But these are the only two series where we'll be able to do that. The rest of the ones we learn about in the rest of the unit, we can't say what that specific number is. But today, for these two, we can. There's, there's the special formula. So. All right, example six. Okay, this one I think is the most interesting because I did not know until I was a teacher that geometric series can do this. So we have the decimal, the repeating decimal, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, and the 0 0.8 are repeating, so I'm going to put the little line above the top. So this is kind of a neat trick. I'm going to walk you through this in case you've never seen this done before. You might have seen it in pre-calc, but you might not. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write out the different fractions that you would add together to get this repeating decimal. Okay. So the first 0, 08, we're going to ignore the rest of them. The first 0, 08, this is the tenth place. This is the hundredth place. So we would say that the first 0, 08 was got, um, was got, was taken from having eight one hundredths, tenth one hundredth. And then the next one was tenth hundredth thousandth tenth. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're just we're just walking through what place they're in. Tenth hundredth thousandth ten thousandth. You see how I counted those? So then we have we have eighth one hundredth, eight one hundredths plus eight ten thousandths. Nope, that's a zero zero zero. I have no eraser. Don't write this. Don't write the one there. It's a zero. Ten thousandth. Plus, so the next one would be ten thousandth. One hundred thousandth. One millionth. Okay, and then the next one is. Ooh. I'm going to stop. I'm just going to not do it. I don't know what it's called. Okay. So, but if, if you were to write this, can you figure out how we would write that pattern? Let's write, so we can see this is geometric, right? And what's the R value? It's that you're close. Yeah, 0. 0.10 or 1 over 10, right? So we want the bottom to multiply by 10, and we want to keep the 8 on the top, right? Okay, so we're going to multiply by 1 over 10. So it's going to converge to a specific number because the R value is 1 over 10. We're multiplying by 1 over 10 every time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure that when we write this out equals 1 to the infinity, our r is 1 over 10 to the n. We just have to make sure that if we plug in 1 for n, it gives us the first term. That's what we have to make sure of. Okay? So if I plug in 1, would that give me the first term? Okay. So plugging in 1 does not give me the first term. So this to make it so it would give me the first term. One. Put n plus one. Okay. Now is one tenth right? Am I adding one zero every time? No, I'm not adding one zero. I'm adding how many zeros am I adding every time? Two zeros. Okay, so we have to reevaluate what the value is. Because it's not one tenth. It's one one. I rolled my R for no reason. One one hundredth. So let's go back and fix this. It's not one ten, it's one one hundredth. No, that fixes our first term, but that doesn't fix our pattern. Okay, let's go back and let's fix our pattern. One one hundredth, and then let's make sure our first term is right again. One one hundredth. Okay, so our pattern is fixed. 100th to the n, and then let's make sure we can get our first term correctly. So if we plug in 1, does that give us our first term? 
Okay, if we plug in 2, would that give us our second term? about oh no I erased it I erased it sorry I erased it when I realized that one-tenth was wrong yeah sorry I did that quickly okay are we seeing how this now matches better okay all right so the r value is 100 that means it still converges okay and now we're seeing that not only does it match our first term it now matches our second term Okay, so we have, this is a better fit than what we had to begin with. Okay, everybody's comfortable with that? Okay, so this converges, the R value is 1 one hundredth. Are we able to find the sum? Yes, we're able to find the sum, right? So I'm going to say the sum is, and the reason we're able to find the sum is because it's geometric, and geometric sequences have, uh, geometric series have a special formula. So we're just going to use the formula. So in the formula, we put the first term, which is 8 one hundredths, and we do 1 minus r. Okay, so we've got 8 one hundredths over 99 one hundredths. And so what is the sum? 8 over 99. So if we were to take the first term, the second term, the third term, it would be 8 over 99. Now, take your calculator or your cell phone or whatever's handy and 8 divided by 99 and tell me what you get. Yeah. Isn't that wild? The first time I saw that, I was like, that is math magic, and I love it. It's cool, right? So now, if you ever see um, a decimal like this, and you want to see what the fraction is, it or whatever, that's how you do it. That's the trick. It's a geometric series. Uh-huh. Any repeating decimal. If you ever want to write any repeating decimal, the trick is figure out what its R value is and do this formula. First term over 1 minus R, you'll find the fraction that represents that repeating decimal. And this is why. Because that is technically a geometric series and it converges to that fraction. Isn't that weird? I don't know. I think it's really cool. Right. I remember the first time I saw it, I just like sat there and stared off into space. And I was like, the world makes perfect sense. Math is real. All right. Uh, example seven. Okay. Uh, the sum from n equals one to infinity of two to the n. We have to do a simple one after that because that one blew our minds. What are we going to conclude with this? So we're going to conclude it diverges, but why? Okay, so it's geometric equals 2. So it diverges because if you write out all the terms, they'd be getting bigger, 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 adding to infinity, not a specific number. They always start with n equals 1 because that's telling you what term to start with. Yeah, they're saying plug in 1, which is typical. You typically write down the term first. So you're never going to have a negative here because you never write down the negative fifth term. You always start with the first term. Write down the first term. Then write down the second term. Then write down the third term. Then write down the fourth term. Then write down the third so, And then it goes to infinity because they're saying this is an infinite series. You can, you can write down plus for the next term forever for the rest of your life, and you'd never be done. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
We're not done. Okay. Example eight. The sum from n equals one to infinity of n. Just kidding. N factorial. You get get it? <laughs> that was a math joke for you. Okay. Uh, two n plus one. Okay. So be careful about these because I did not put parentheses, which means that two is a coefficient. It is not part of the factorial. So I'm not saying 2n factorial. I'm saying 2 times factorial. Do you see the difference? And then plus 1 is just added on the end. On the very end. It's like 2x plus 1. 2 times your variable and then a plus 1 hanging out on the end. Okay. So one way to look at this is this geometric does it seem like telescoping? Does it seem like what we know of telescoping where if you write something, you're going to have a number and then you're going to have another number next that's going to cancel out with the first number? What do we usually have with telescoping, though? There's usually a minus, right? There's usually telescoping. So what was the other thing that showed up in our notes last night that could maybe be what this is? Nth term test. Okay, that was the other thing that showed up in our notes that is what this could be. Does that make sense? So, so think about your clues as you're looking through these problems, your clues um, are about what the problem is. So telescoping usually has a minus. It's usually got two like terms, and there's usually a minus between because you have to have some way of I'm writing stuff down and then stuff cancels, and a minus sign is how that's going to happen. And then with your geometric, you've usually got some sort of parentheses, some sort of exponent. That's how you've got your repeated multipli or yeah, your repeated multiplication is having an exponent. That's what repeated multiplication is. So we don't have a minus here. We don't have I'm going to write terms down and then other terms are going to cancel. We don't have an exponent, which means we don't have repeated multiplication. So telescoping doesn't fit. Geometric doesn't fit. Nth term test is kind of to a series the same thing that like a GCF is to factoring you should always try it because it might be there and it's easy to check does that make sense okay so the nth term test is is going to always use n to the n thepl because we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity okay so we're just going to do the nth term test real quick now you'll quickly realize just like the GCF a lot of times you'll hope a problem with big numbers and factoring has a GCF and you'll be like, Ugh, dang it, it doesn't. This is a slight problem. I hate those. Uh, that's kind of how the nth term test often is after today. You'll hope the nth term test is going to work and you'll be like, dang it, it doesn't. But for today it will a few times. Okay. So I just want you to know that you'll want it to work because it's really easy, but it doesn't always work. The same way we like for the GCF to work, but you can't always factor out a number. Okay, so nth term test, we're going to go ahead and say the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over 2n factorial plus 1. Okay, so when we do that, we can think about n to the n thepl. And what do we end up getting? We get one half. Now this is nice because one half does not equal zero. And zero is the only answer with the nth term test you do not want to get. So guess what the most common answer of the nth term test is? Zero. Yeah. So this is one half, which means that the nth term test had a conclusion. Okay. If it equals zero, there is no conclusion. Okay, so but it does equal an answer, it equals one half, which means that it diverges. It doesn't go to one half. Remember the only two the only two tests where you can say that it converges to a specific number are geometric and telescoping. Nth term test cannot tell you that it converges to something. It can only tell you if it diverges. That's the only thing the nth term test can tell you. Okay. If it equals zero, it is inconclusive. Try another test. Inconclusive, try another test. For today, you would. After today, yeah. 
So if it equals zero, inconclusive, you would try another test. That's what that would mean. So we're learning it early on because it's like a GCF. It's like you'd always want to try it just in case. But kind of like a GCF, it's like oftentimes you get nothing from it. Diverges. So what this means is that, remember again, if you were to write the terms out, they're just going to get bigger, 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 bigger. So if you write the terms out, they're going to get bigger, 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 bigger. They're going to add up to positive infinity or well, positive infinity. Those numbers are going to be positive. They're just going to get big. That's what that means. All right. Number uh, nine. All right. For this one, we have... The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So if you look at this one, does it fit? Does it have an exponent so that it is repeated multiplication? Okay, so that would be geometric if it's repeated multiplication. No. Does it have two terms with a minus so that you can tell if you write a number, you could cancel a number? No. So it's not geometric, it's not telescoping. That means we're going to use the nth term test. Arithmetic is not one that we're testing. Arithmetic is very straightforward, diverges. If you think about if the numbers are consistently like just going up by three, going up by three, those numbers are always going to get bigger, bigger, bigger. So they're always either going to add to positive infinity because they're either going up in size or they're going down in size. So their sum is going to go to negative infinity. So not with arithmetic because arithmetic consistently adds or subtracts the same number. So those, as far as convergence or divergence goes, it's, an, it's not an interesting case because it's always diverges. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because you're either adding, so they're either diverging because they're going to positive infinity, or you're subtracting the same number, so they're diverging because they're going to negative infinity. So they're not, they're not an interesting case. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so if we do 1 over n, this is going to be the nth term test. So we'll do the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. And what do we get? Zero. And zero is inconclusive. Inconclusive. And when we see this, we have to try another test. Which we can't do yet because we don't know enough. We know it's not geometric. We know it's not telescoping, which means we have to wait. Okay, so we're going to write, but we have to wait. So anytime you get the nth term test and it equals zero, that means it is inconclusive and you have to try another test. But for now, we wait. We don't have enough information to do this problem. Okay, we haven't learned it yet. Last one, example 10, and this is the very last one, very last one, and then all done, and then on to the practice. So example 10, this is a word problem. You might have seen one like this in free cal. A ball is dropped. It's a bouncy ball. Uh, from a height of six feet. and begins bouncing. The height of each bounce
is three-fourths of the previous bounce. Find the total vertical distance traveled by the ball. So I had to draw a picture of this because it hurt my brain too much. So here's the ball and it goes down. This is your six feet. And then it goes up three fourths of that and then down three fourths of that. And then it goes up three fourths of that and then down three fourths of that. And then it goes up three fourths of that and then down three fourths of that. And then up three fourths of that and then down three fourths of that. Do you guys see how it's working? Okay. This would be three fourths of six. There's two of them, right? So that's for this height and this height. And then this one would be three fourths of three fourths of six. And there's two of them, one here, one here. And then this one would be three fourths of three fourths of three fourths of six. Do you guys see that repeated multiplication? Mm hmm. Okay. The initial six feet, this is not part of a geometric sequence. This feet is not. The rest of it is. You guys see that? Okay. So to write the geometric sequence, I'm going to say six plus, plus. Okay. And then do you see how it's not just one geometric sequence, it's two because the ball goes up and then it comes down the same amount and then it goes up and it comes down the same amount and it goes up and it comes down the same amount do you guys see that so there are two geometric sequences that are exactly the same n equals one to infinity okay and then what should i be writing three fourths to the n So how do I get, if this is what I'm considering my first term, should I put a 6 in here? Yeah? Okay. So if I want to find all of these vertical distances, you know, and then the dot, 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 because it's you know, continues forever until it just stops moving. How do I add this all up? How do I find it? So I got six plus two of this. How do I find this? The sum formula. So I'm going to say 6 plus 2 times the sum formula. What's the sum formula? Okay, what do I get when I plug in 1?
Is it nine fourths? 18 over four, nine halves. Okay, so it'd be nine halves over one minus three fourths. Okay, so nine halves over one fourth. Thirty six over two. Thirty six over two is eighteen. Okay. Six plus two times eighteen. There we go. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. when we when we drew the picture, we saw that what we were drawing was the sum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. This is asking for the limit because it says 1 to infinity. Do you see how that would be similar to the idea of a limit? Mm -hmm. It's actually a little bit closer. It's very similar to the idea of an integral where you're like adding things up for infinity. And an integral is very tight. Is very All of that is very tied together. That idea of limits, integrals, all of that is very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anytime you have infinity limits are not far behind. Okay, if your brains are okay, it is time to do the practice for today. So go ahead and get out the book pages from yesterday because we are using page 601. And then, can you guys bring that, uh, my binder right there? And then actually, hold on. No, I should do it from Canvas because what if I edited it? What if I edited it?